Transformer models are indispensable for today's natural language processing and information retrieval research. Yet previous research has shown for various models in information retrieval, the typos in search queries can significantly reduce the quality of the resulting ranking. In this presentation, I will walk you through a joint research paper by Harrison Seltz, Martin Potast and me on revisiting query variation robustness of transformer models on more architectures and neural large language models. We ultimately reaffirm previous results. To understand the problem, we need to know that query variations, like using only keywords, accidental typos, but also paraphrases in different word orders, are the norm in practice. Unfortunately, previous work showed that contemporary models and architectures were not robust to the variations. But previous work on the topic in information retrieval mostly focused on typos and did not yet include large language models with billions of parameters. With our work, we close this gap and observe the same robustness issues for recent models as well. Before I go into the details of our experiment, here's a quick overview of how embedding models are used in information retrieval for so-called dense retrieval. The key idea is that embeddings of a text are thought of as semantic vector representations. As depicted in the graphic on the right, with BERT used as an embedding model, when the user of a search engine issues a query, the query's embedding is calculated and the documents are ordered by the similarity to the query in the embedding space. If the embeddings are truly semantic, this means that the semantically most similar document to the query will be returned to the user in the first position. In our experiment, we used various embedding models for dense retrieval and measured their robustness. The embedding models are SentenceBird, a popular DistillBird-based embedding model, CharacterBird, a modified version of Bird that was made typo-aware by replacing the word piece tokenizer with a character-level tokenizer and fine-tuning for robustness, and E5Mistral and Angle, the top two embedding models on the massive text embedding benchmark at the time of our experiments. E5Mistral is based on Mistral and marks the largest embedding model we tested with 7 billion parameters. Finally, we tested ADA v2, the state-of-the-art commercial embedding model by OpenAI. Since it is proprietary, no architectural details are publicly av available. We believe, however, that it presents an interesting baseline nonetheless. For our dataset, we chose a query variation dataset by Peña et al, since it's the only variation dataset available that ensures identical semantics between the query and its variants. Other query variation datasets, like UQV100, usually contain queries that express the same information need, but not the same semantics. To create the dataset, Peña et al. came up with multiple categories of query variations. Misspelling, naturality, which describes the observation that users usually don't write fully formed natural language queries, but use keywords, ordering of words, and paraphrasing. They then manually filtered out query variations that did not preserve the semantic of their respective original query. The rightmost column shows the number of queries per transformation that remained. Our experiment is split into assessing ranking robustness and embedding robustness. To evaluate ranking robustness, we evaluate the embedding model M as a dense retrieval model, once using the query variants and then using original the original queries. This gives us two NDCG effectiveness scores, which we subtract to get the robustness score. This delta NDCG should ideally be zero since the model should be equally effective on the variations and the original query. If delta NDCG were positive, it would indicate that the model performs better on the query variant. Our setup to measure embedding robustness looks similar. We embed the query variants and the original query using the embedding model and then need to compute their similarity. The first metric that may come to mind for the similarity is cosine similarity. Perhaps surprisingly, it does not work, however. Before continuing, you may pause the video and you ask yourself what the expected cosine similarity is for two arbitrary texts. We often think that the embeddings of two unrelated texts should have a cosine similarity of zero, since this should mean that they are not similar at all. However, in the graphic, we can see the distributions of cosine similarity for all pairs of queries in the dataset. 
Only for sentence word is the expected cosine similarity even close to zero. This shows that a high cosine similarity does not necessarily indicate high semantic similarity. A cosine similarity of 0.71 is quite high but indicates unrelated semantics for character bird. The reason for this is that em uh, the embedding vectors are directionally localized. This further means that cosine similarity can't directly be compared across models. A cosine similarity that is high for sentence bird may not be high for character bird, for example. To mitigate this, we adjust cosine similarity for anisotropy by remapping it such that a value of 0 indicates unrelatedness and a value of 1 means semantic identity. We now use this to measure the embedding's robustness. For ranking robustness, we find that in most cases the query variations reduce effectiveness and effectiveness degradation is statistically significant. We also generally observed a smaller spread of delta NDCG on antique than on track DL in every category except naturality, which on antique all models are least robust to. For embedding robustness, we can observe similar trends. In general, all models are most robust to ordering and paraphrasing, and character bird is the most robust model on misspelling, which may be expected due to its architecture and training. On all other categories, however, Engel is the most robust with the highest median and smallest spread. Interestingly, the biggest model of the bunch, E5 Mistral, is in the median similarly robust to the best model in each category, but exhibits a larger spread while it's also the most effective model in every category. To conclude, we find that none of the embedding models we tested were robust as embedding models or ranking models. Simply scaling up the transformer architecture seems to improve robustness, as E5 Mr. shows, but interestingly, E5 is least robust to naturality, possibly, possibly because it was pre-trained on fully formed natural language text. To investigate further how general robustness may be improved, we noted that today's LLMs exhibit impressive zero-shot effectiveness on natural language tasks. Given that E5 Mistral is based on an instruct LLM and can be prompted, we investigated if simply prompting for robustness can help. E5 Mistral's authors instructed Mistral to, given a web search query, retrieve relevant passages that answer the query. We tried variations of this instruction in completely different instructions and plotted them. Here, the X marks the author's instruction and the points mark the effectiveness of our instructions on the original query in misspelled variants. The black line marks ideal robustness since it denotes the exact same effectiveness on the query, original query and typo-induced variants. We can see that none of the instructions we tested significantly improved beyond the author's prompt, and more effective prompts are more robust, but we could not find a significantly more robust prompt. The problem with prompting is its inherent e discrete nature, such that we alternatively tested how training on a training set from Peña et al.'s transformations affects robustness. To test this, we fine-tuned character bird and prompt-tuned E5, E5 Mistral. Prompt-tuning refers to learning weights prepended to the, inputs, um, to the inputs embeddings, instead of manually typing a prompt. The LLM is frozen during training, such that only the fixed prefix is learned. Our results show that both models improved robustness across all categories, except character bird, which got slightly less robust on misspelling, which may be expected. Interestingly, mean effectiveness on the variance is not improved, however, and effectiveness degradation is still t statistically significant. In summary, we noted that transformer-based embedding models make effective rankers, but are not robust to naturality naturally occurring query variations. We tested more recent models and previous work, as well as a model specifically designed to be robust to typos, large language models, and a commercial embedding model. But we ultimately found that they still are not robust. We could further improve robustness, but not effectiveness, by fine-tuning and prompt-tuning, and conclude that, to create more robust models, we need more query variation datasets that ensure semantic identity on more categories than just misspelling.